Welcome to the uh, FFC's Truth on Earth, and today we have a very special guest, an ex-porn star. Sal? Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for being here today. You're, um, thanks for having me here. You're welcome. So, tell us a little bit more about your story. Well, I was raised in San Fernando Valley. Uh, my mom had me when I was when she was 12. Um, I was raped at the age of six by three different people. Um, it was for, they raped me, it was three different occasions, but the last time they raped me, that was the big one where they really messed me up. Um, my mom was in the sex industry, and um, so basically she left me alone with the babysitter or whoever that was. And then I started doing drugs at the age of 18. But in the meantime, when I was in high school, I used to sell myself to the kids, not the kids, but the, my friends, so I could make extra money. I got into the, officially got into the uh, sex industry when I was 16, but a family member started um, putting me into trafficking at the age of 14. I did my first film when I was 17 and a half. Um, and by the age of 18, I was already um, doing Vicodins, um, Miracles, Crystal Meth, and Coke. Um, and then I met a couple. They, were, they became my agents. And um, they're the ones who um, introduced me to drug addiction. And, um, and the porn industry totally messed me up physically and mentally. I was, thank God that I was one of the lucky ones. Not lucky, but God really protected me because um, I never got anything, no diseases or anything. Um, my mom passed away when I was 21. She died in 2010. And that she was my only family member that I had. So that really, changed my whole the it really messed me up and it made me want to change being in porn it was real damaging and it messed me up mentally a lot because now like I have a lot of problems well not now but before I had a lot of problems um, all you do is think about sex 24-7 so I was in the industry for 9 years and I was addicted since I was 18 to drug addiction, and um, I got out of the business in 2010. I went into a rehab, and then I went to Victory Outreach, and then I went back in porn in 2012, and I came, that's the last time I actually did a scene, and then I've been out for about two years. You said, first thing you mentioned was that at the age of six, you were raped. Yes. Um, how did that make you feel? I mean, emotionally, state of mind. I mean, as a child, what goes through your mind at that point? Well, at that age, I stopped being a child. I stopped playing with toys. I, it was my whole childhood changed. I was a whole different person. Um, and then I was confused. You know, I, after I got raped, Everything changed. My, the way I was, the way I used to do things. I was more quiet. I was afraid of people. Um, I started playing with. Um, I wasn't playing with cars no, no more. And then my mother started telling me, or showing me how to do makeup or how to be a little girl. So that's what triggered everything. So everything completely changed. Everything. I mean, you were physically a child, but mentally you were no longer a child. I was already a grown-up at that time. But physically you were six years old? Yes. So physically you were mm -hmm. a child, but mentally you were not. Mm -hmm. And how was your reaction with other kids? I mean, did you have any interaction with them? And when you did, did what happened in that, you know? I had no reaction. I had no, I never really got to hang out with them or anything. No My mom used to always like, not let me play with them or she would always make sure I was alone or with her. Okay. Now, shortly after the age of six, uh, you, you mentioned at the age of 14, uh, something happened. You, you were into yeah, drugs? Yeah, a family member. Um, sex trafficking, right? They did sex trafficking. 
trafficking. They um, started taking me to porn conventions, meeting agents, producers, porn stars, and then they got me into the business. At the age of 14? 14. I mean, you would think that these people know that's not right. You know, as far as law states, you got to be over 18 yes. to be involved with that mm -hmm. sort of industry. Um, tell me, what, what was the attitude of the producers, directors that knew you were a 14-year-old and did they care? Did they show any compassion or is just business? Uh, tell me a little bit about that. What, what did you see at that point? It's all about the money. They love it. You know, uh, of course, they were not going to put me in the cover box of the movies. And, but when I was 14, well, from 14 to 17, I only did about three movies, which wasn't much. But it was still like, they would love, they would love it. But what they did, they were, um, they would get me clients to do escort. Okay. So that's why, you know. So uh, did you know any other, both male and female kids or at the age of 14, 15, 16, 17 that were in that industry who were have, who do, or have been going through the same thing that you were going through? At that time, no, but way before I was, way before that, I knew like two people that were in it. And then the same thing that happened to me happened to them. Now, between the ages of 6 and 14, uh, because you were raped at 6, and at 14 you started being sex trafficked, uh, between that time, uh, those many years, uh, what happened? I mean, tell me a little bit more of that gap that we, we don't know about. Um, From the age of what? 6 to 14. Oh, okay, so I got raped at the age of six. I came out of a closet when I was eight. I had my first encounter with a guy, whatever, at the age of eight. So that's when I was totally open to everything. My mom was okay with it. She would even buy me, she wanted me to be a girl. So she would treat me like her daughter. So from six to 14, I was exploring like myself. You know, not with women, but with men. Okay. You know, it, it, it's it's amazing to hear the story because it's eye-opening to see what is actually going on in the San Fernando Valley, right in our own backyard, this very moment. And, and it's eye-opening because we have high schools around us, obviously. And there's high school kids who are trying to find the identity of themselves. And here we have someone who was trying to find that identity at a very early age. Uh, you mentioned that you got into the porn industry. Your family members got you into that? You said they took you to different agents, uh, producers. Uh, tell me about your first uh, experience within the actual porn industry as far as what was in your mind? I mean, did it seem at that point a norm to you? Did it seem kind of weird? Uh, did you feel like you knew you were being used? What, what was your state of mind at that point? Well, my mom was in the sex um, industry, so for me, it was normal. You know, um, I didn't know better. So being in the industry at that time, it, it was normal, it was like if it was the right thing to do. I was blinded, so, you know, I just, seeing my mom do whatever she did, I, I figure my mom's doing it, so I'm, 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 pro I'm probably doing something right, you know? My mom was the one teaching me how to do everything, basically. Right, I, you spoke to me and you told me um, about parties mm -hmm. that the you would be invited to uh, you would be brought to even against your own will and in these parties they would have uh, orgies they would do drugs um, tell us a little bit more about that as far as your experience when it came to you not wanting to be there and also knowing other people who were involved who did not want to be there I mean uh, what 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 happens? I mean, it, it's very disturbing to know that someone at this very moment could be going through the same thing. That 
is being taken against their will and saying, you need to come to this party and participate in adult activities. I mean, tell us. Well, at that time, I was new in the industry, and um, it was a couple. They were my agents at that time, and um, they, they would get me jobs to do scenes or photo shoots or whatever. I was still chunky at that time, and um, they would get me pills. Because of them, I started doing drug addictions because they were pushing me to um, do it. They would go and buy the drugs for me. For you to lose weight. For me to lose weight and, you know, because when you're tweaked out, you do more things. Mm -hmm. And then there was times that I didn't want to go to the parties because they, they, they had parties every weekend. So they would make me go to their parties. Sometimes if I wasn't at their house, they would come pick me up by the house when, mom, when my mom was out of town. And they would make me go to their house. And then if I didn't go to the house, they would tell me that they were not going to get me any shoots. So I didn't want my mom to be upset at me. So I had to go. Wow. It, it, you know, you have a person who is growing up in an environment, in a household, that this is completely normal. I mean, being in, in, in the porn industry, having different partners, being involved uh, sexually, it's a normal thing. Well, it was a normal thing for you. And to come to a point of, of reflection, I mean, when did you actually hit a point uh, of that reflection when you zoomed out a little bit and started thinking and saying, is this what I really want? This is not what I want. What happened, what happened in that point in life that made you have that reflection? Well, in order for me to think about that, when I was in the industry, I never thought about that. The only time I did was when my mom passed away. That's when everything really hit me. Because she, she was the only family member I had. Um, when she passed away, I was already transformed. Meaning, I was a girl. Because I was, uh, they call it, uh, tranny. You know, I had long hair. I looked like a girl. I was trying to look like my mother. <clears throat> so when she had to pass away this is how I feel she had to die in order for me to um, get out of the sex industry okay um, you mentioned that you never thought about that while you were in the industry no never not once I mean, no but you I mean you, you are you are like miserable because right. you, there's something missing in you but you right. don't know what right you're just lost Yes. You, you're doing what you're doing. You're participating into what you're participating. You're living the lifestyle that you're accustomed to. Mm -hmm. But you never question it because that's all you know. Yeah. And, and you just go along with it. Mm -hmm. um, how many porn, porn stars uh, that you know of that are in an industry right now, approximate number, that do not want the lifestyle? I'm friends with some of the biggest porn, porn stars in the whole industry. And even the top people don't want to be in it. So there's about at least, that I know of, people that are well-known, 40 to 50 people. And all of this because they can't break mm -hmm. that bondage. Some people call it bondage. You know, when it, when it comes to really um, observing the situation and knowing the psyche of, of the whole thing when it comes to drugs, sex, everything, uh, it's more understandable when you call it an addiction because it's hard to break. It's, it's a thing that's not easy to break. It's hard to get away from. And you heard it, you have Sal saying that um, you have both the stars and also the guys upstairs who do not want to be in the lifestyle but cannot break it. But also, <clears throat> there's a lot, a lot of them that want to get out of it, but then it follows you, porn follows you. There, I've known people that <clears throat> they themselves want to get a different job, but then they get the job, but then months later, their bosses find out what they used to do, so they get fired. So they, and they have to end up going back in porn because they don't know anything else. So they get fired because of what they, were doing, what they did mm -hmm. in the past. Amazing. Well, one of the things that you also mentioned to us was uh, the Pink Cross organization. The Pink Cross Foundation. 
Foundation. Uh, tell me a little bit about them, and, and yeah, I believe you're involved with them now. You're in that organization. Yes. You're involved. You're helping. What do you guys do? Well, we what we do it. Um, it's a Christian foundation. We um, we help the porn addicts. We also help the we help, we help strippers, prostitutes, porn stars get out of that sex industry. They need help. Any kind of help they need, we help them. Uh, do you work with people who are not yet in that position? but have a struggle and it, that you may see that their their way of life or uh, addiction may be leading to that lifestyle? Yes. Uh, I mean, you have these people sometimes uh, who have been sexually uh, abused as children who can't, th can't stop thinking about either drugs uh, or sex and uh, they want to get into the porn industry but they don't want to get into it. They uh, sold themselves before but they don't want to do that you work with those people as well the, the ones that mm -hmm. are barely yes yeah, so I, I work with everybody everybody mm -hmm. I try to help everybody you know I, I do and I remember seeing some postings uh, of pictures that you were with a bunch of friends that are porn stars and that they mm -hmm. you, you had mentioned in the caption that they're one of the ones that uh, want to be prayed for yeah I actually pray for I can say his name I know he won't get me on Jeremy he's a the king of porn and um he has let me pray for him so it's pretty cool you know like they're open they're o most of them are open are open to it but they just don't know how to get out of it they don't know so we have a group of people who come on scene and express pleasure express satisfaction and when they have scenes outside the actual adult content they express pleasure and satisfaction in the lifestyle, in the income financially, and on the lifestyle itself. But in reality, uh, we're, we're hearing uh, our brother Sal here tell us that behind that, there's a completely different scene. And we have a group of people who are looking to get out, but most of them do not know how. And we have the Christian community of the San Fernando Valley possibly not doing enough and, and we hope that this video can reach not only those who are not Christian but those who are Christian so that can get they can get an insight as to what actually is going on in the background well most churches you know they have the heart to help people and stuff but they're too focused on helping the drug addict the the gang members or whatever the the youth or whatever but we need more churches to help us reach out to this kind of people, to the homosexuals, to the prostitutes, the strippers, porn stars, because most churches are afraid of that, the, the whole porn title. They don't know how to react or they don't know, they don't really know what to do. Right. And it's sad because we're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be the salt of this earth. Um, remember, we're truth on earth. So here, everything that we speak about is truth, is real, it's raw. And you're com completely, absolutely correct. I believe that the churches of the San Fernando Valley should be doing a little bit more, not only into the entertainment industry, adult entertainment industry, but we have to pull a boulevard that are full of prostitutes. I was a prostitute myself, too. We need, we need more churches to get involved in this area because we have a group of people who are looking for a way out and don't know a way out. And with this video, uh, those who are watching at home, if you feel that you want to contribute, you can definitely uh, send us a message, send us uh, your phone number, we'll get in contact with you, we'll connect you with Sal, and we'll get you guys connected so you guys can work together. If you'd like to donate to the organization that he's with, you can do so also. Um, this is a great interview for me because it, it is real. It is, it, I, I don't know any other word to put it, but real. And it's it, it good that we are bringing this subject to the community of the San Fernando Valley so that not only the Christians, but also the non-Christians can know that within the porn industry, it is not always just good. It's not pleasure. It's... It's more like an addiction that can't be broken. 
And the only way that can be broken, as we all know, is through us wanting to have the willpower or having anybody else uh, helping us. Now, you met Christ. Yes. How did you, how did you meet Christ? Well, um, I came into a re Christian rehab, Victory Outreach, in 2010. And I just went in there thinking that, <clears throat> oh, I'm only going to go there for a month or two, stop doing drugs, and then I go back in porn. But then the whole everything changed. So your mentality was, let me just get off drugs, but I'm mm -hmm. still going to continue with porn. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like that. And then getting into the Christian rehab, that whole, everything changed. My whole mentality. I I was in there for two months, and then they cut, I cut my hair, and that's when everything, everything started changing. When you went to the Christian rehab center, what was the one thing that stood out from those people? So what did they do in the Christian Rehab Center um, in order for you to trust them? And how did you connect with them? Because I know there had to be a point of, of connection that you were willing to say, oh, you know what, I'm, you know, at the beginning, obviously, we're all like, uh, you know. But there had to be a point as to where you decided to, okay, I want to connect with them. What did they do that you were able to take that step forward with them? Well, at first, it wasn't really comfortable because um, I went into a Christian men's home. So I, I, was, I came in looking like a girl, long hair, mini skirt, whatever. So it was like, it was shocking for me and for those guys. You know, they didn't know how to react with me. So, <clears throat> and me coming from the upper lifestyle and coming into the like, lower whatever, I didn't know how to act with them. So it took it was it took about three months for me to like start trusting him, trusting them. So and then what made me want to stay there it was the love that I have for people. You know, even the men, even the drug addicts, they were like they they started treating me the same. You know, they didn't treat me like something here. So it was the love that they showed that made you stay there. So there we know that us as a Christian community, just by showing a little love can go a long way. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for that love that you got, you, who knows what you might have been right now. Yeah, who knows. Who knows. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is that you are now here in God. You're now involved with the organization that is dedicated to help those people that you were involved with before. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I believe that's pretty much a, a better satisfaction. It brings you a lot more pleasure than what you experienced before, right? Yeah, now I have peace. I'm happy. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen to me the next day or whatever, you know. So, um, one of the, let's, let's end with this. What is, if, 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 for the people that are watching this, what is the one thing that you want them to remember? For, for their life. I mean, their, their lifestyle. I mean, these people that are watching are both non-Christian and Christian people. But for the Christian community, what would you like to tell them? Uh, so that they can, I don't know, react. What is this one thing you want to let them know? I mean, there's got to be something that, that you want to share. Uh, you've obviously shared your powerful testimony and, and glory to God for that. But... What is, what is something you want to tell the Christian community who was watching this? I mean, what would you like them to remember of this? Well, just, so, just for them to remember that there's people that are hurting out there and that they need their prayers. You know, they need their support. And just for them to be open, open, have an open heart to those people that are in the streets, with the, the drug, drug addicts, the prostitutes. Even people in the sex industry, you know, just to be open and try to reach out to them even more, you know, because if God changed me, he could change anybody else. I know there's something in the wake of your smile.